What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Ideal Offseason. This is actually the first video in the series that actually takes place during the offseason. But for those of you that don't know, this is a series where I get to put on the GM cap for a little bit and help an NBA team navigate through their offseason. We try to make this series as realistic as possible, meaning we're not just throwing LeBron onto some team and saying, hey, there we go, rebuild complete. No, we're actually trying to take into account the team's different needs and their unique situations and trying to use moves that seem realistic to make an ideal offseason or a realistic outcome. If it's a team like the Spurs, they're obviously not going to win the finals next year, but we're trying to build on this great foundation that we have to better prepare them for the rest of their years to come. Whereas if it's a team like the Lakers and they still got LeBron, well, then we're obviously trying to win a championship with them. But hey, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment. I've responded to every single comment to my YouTube channel up to this point, and I intend to keep on doing so. And hey, before you click and skip ahead in the video, I have an important announcement. For those of you guys that have been watching for a little bit now, I always talk about how I respond to every single comment on my YouTube channel and that I intend to keep on doing so. Well, I do intend to keep on doing so. But as the channel's growing, you know, I'm getting more and more comments, and I want to make sure that I'm giving ample attention to those that deserve it. That last point is kind of what I'm talking about, though. When I joined YouTube, I wanted to create a space where people can have like uh, a good basketball conversation. My job as a coach is to educate at the end of the day, and I want a space that's different from the rest of the internet where people think they can just scream and yell and say whatever they want. I still intend to respond to every single comment, but from now on, if I get a comment that's just like overtly negative or insulting, or it's just kind of yelling out random things, I'm probably just going to timestamp you to this point, and I'm going to hit you with like an objection profanity or something comment. That way I'm still responding to everything, but you guys understand that it's like, look, I'm not going to give time to those comments. I'm not saying you guys have to write out some like long paragraph for every comment or anything like that either. I'm just saying like those, we know what comments those are, the useless ones out there. That's that's what I'm going to hit you guys with from now on. So there you go. Let's let's get on to the video. So we're back here on the ideal offseason spreadsheet, and we are with a team that just lost the NBA finals in the Dallas Mavericks. Um, a quick plug uh, for those of you that don't know, this is a little spreadsheet that I put together to kind of help visualize this whole series and help bring it to life. If you guys do want access to the spreadsheet, because I've given it out to over 100 people so far so that's pretty cool um it's a pretty simple process all you have to do is leave a comment saying i would like the spreadsheet or something along those lines that obviously helps my video perform better as the comments but um i'll drop you then a link to my discord you can join my discord and shoot me a dm there there i get you the link to the spreadsheet and everything super super simple but anyway let's talk about the dallas mavericks who just came up short this season but wow what a season first of all claps out to them phenomenal job this season uh this group of guys right here uh really got it together there at the end of the season through some really good GM moves. So I've got some big shoes to fill in this one between the PJ Washington and Daniel Gafford additions, who when we covered it at the trade deadline, I was like, these moves are phenomenal. These make so much sense to me. And wow, they worked out even better than I could have imagined. So props to them. They ran into a Celtics team that look, this Celtics team was just so much better than everybody else. It's just, it's, uh, it's unfair at the end of the day, like six of those guys should be on like hundred million dollar contracts. It feels like, but you know what? That's the team they ran into. We got to find a way to improve with this team. And I think it's a really interesting one to maneuver here because when, when we have these teams that were so, so, so close, right? It's like, okay, how do we make them actually better, right? Because they were good enough to beat all but one team in the NBA realistically, right? And it's like, okay, how do we make sure that they're going to be better next year? Because for all intents and purposes, the Celtics are probably going to be back next year and looking pretty similar. So I've been kind of thinking about it for just a little bit, and I've been looking at this whole situation, and I've got some ideas that I kind of want to run through. But anyway, let's, let's kind of start to go into it. Let's start our deep dive here with our cap space situation. So we're not quite at the aprons yet, which is good. That still gives us flexibility to do so. There would be like cap holds and stuff in place that would kind of prevent us from doing certain moves. So we'll kind of keep that in mind. This luxury tax number is going to be important because we have a particular free agent and I'll pull it up here for us. Um, I want to pull up the Dallas Mavericks free agencies. We have Derek Jones Jr. as a unrestricted free agent and we do not have any bird rights right now. What does that mean exactly? Bird rights essentially mean like how much you can pay certain players. You get bird rights by having guys on a team for a certain amount of years. Uh, there's also early bird rights. Um, you can get early bird rights, which means you can give guys a certain like length of contract if they've been on your team for like two consecutive seasons. You get like full bird rights if it's three years. And so the more bird rights that you have with someone, the more money you can offer them. So we can actually only offer Derek Jones Jr. only so much more money from what he was getting paid this year, which was a minimum contract. Now there's ways to go about this though. 
there's kind of like two avenues that I kind of see us being able to to go down and I don't want to explain it all too much because it's a little bit boring but I'm trying to explain my thoughts at least like somewhat so what we could do here is we could work within the apron and we could give like um, we could basically give like hey here's an offer here with a player option here that's a little bit more money than what you were getting this last season basically like continue to play well once the player option is up then we can um, we can renegotiate a bigger contract with you because we have the early bird rights now we can give you more so like 12 13 million dollars a season or what we could do is we could use the non-tax player um, mid-level exception I believe it's called and that I, I have the exact number for I was looking it up it's more so like a four-year like 50 million dollar contract which is probably fair for Derek Jones jr but we have to get out of the luxury tax space to do so and so we'll, we'll talk about that and see kind of where our moves take us because there's a particular order we're gonna need to do things in to make that work Anyway, looking at our draft pick situation, not that great. We've got the last pick in this draft. Technically, this is 58 because I think two teams lost the rights to their picks or whatever. I think one of them is the Bulls, actually, right? Didn't the Bulls, like, lose their pick? It could be wrong because of, like, the Lonzo tampering or, like, something else. I don't know. Uh, we do have our first round pick next year, which, for all intents and purposes, should be relatively valuable because every pick in the 2025 class is somewhat valuable right now. It's supposed to be a pretty good class. And, look, we're not looking for some stud rookie out of, with, like, the 28th or 29th pick like we're projected to have at this point so this is probably going to be a good trade chip for us otherwise we don't have a lot else to work with like we really uh realistically won't be able to move this 26 pick because of the uh, stipend rule and we've got these like 20 uh, or these second round picks that we could kind of flip if necessary i'm hoping we don't really have to use those but let's get into contracts luca Kyrie, they make money they're staying on the team tim hardaway jr we got to find a way to move him clearly doesn't fit on this team and that's not really his fault like i know people want to kind of a clamor on Tim Hardaway Jr. here, but like there's there's a certain way that players like him need to play. They need to have an expectation of certain shots and everything. They need to be going through offenses to be successful. You kind of saw in that one finals game, like when he got to like run through certain sets and something like that, and he knew shots were coming, like he played a lot better. That's how these microwave type guys tend to work. I've I've coached a lot of guys like this in my time. I I, I know exactly the play type he is. When he's just not sure when the ball is going to get to him next, like and he's kind of just standing around waiting doesn't really work well for him we should try to move him on he's an expiring contract and we can use that to some team's advantage pj washington and daniel gafford some absolute steals of contracts they'll be sticking around i love josh green i think josh green should have more of a role on this team than he even currently does but at the end of the day he's on a really nice contract i love his hustle i love what everything he does out there josh green i want sticking around maxi kleba feels kind of like an odd man out to me at times because at the end of the day come playoff time do we really need maxi kleba out there i like maxi kleba a lot like ideally the spacing and the defense is really good he's been hurt a lot recently he's only getting older i believe he's gonna be 33 next year and it's like okay 11 million dollars for two more seasons he still has value but come playoff time do we really need another big when we should just have gafford lively and pj washington really be like that should be our core at the end of the day now we want depth like that's still important but i don't know I, I feel like we can use this to turn him into something else it's something we'll explore Derek lively phenomenal rookie season awesome dwight powell kind of a useless contract for us right now i actually have an idea of something i want to do with dwight powell so i think dwight powell will probably be moved dante exum has a non-guaranteed contract i'm going to guarantee that shit right now because dante exum had a really good season for us i put him at the small forward i don't know what the hell position Dante Exum plays at this point. He's just solid at basketball. Maxon's Prosper here. Uh, one of the rookies didn't really get a ton of playing time. Um, odds are, like, maybe if we move Kleba, maybe he could kind of fit in somewhere and start to get some burn. Um, we didn't see a ton of him this year. Obviously not a great level of production from what we did see, but still, young dude could have some value to somebody. He's a good athlete, uh, supposedly like a good defender and stuff. We just didn't see a ton of him this year, so it's hard to say. Uh, Jaden Hardy. Jaden Hardy's a guy i like a lot i like that outside of Kyrie and luca we have this like other guard on the team that can go and really create his own shot i think that's a really cool skill to have uh clearly whenever he's out there he's kind of that microwave role except he's a point guard so he already has the ball they tell him hey go get your buckets go do your thing sometimes the turnovers are a little bit high but he's still young and uh his contract isn't completely guaranteed but i'm gonna completely just guarantee it for now i don't plan on moving Jaden hardy i really like him aj lawson um a guy that uh, was a second round pick coming in didn't really get a ton of burn or anything this year his contract is not guaranteed at all but it's also really really cheap 
on a team that is overall pretty expensive and being able to move our roster in the middle of the season is kind of going to be important because here's the thing if something's not clicking with this team we want to have flexibility and the further we get into these aprons and stuff the more restricted that we get so I'm trying to keep us out of this second apron if at all possible so for the time being AJ Lawson's probably going to stay on the team and so where does that leave us two roster spots and we have a draft pick currently but again there's an order of operations we kind of need to follow here so first things first, we have to plan for the fact that we want Derek Jones Jr. back, right? We really want Derek Jones Jr. back. He was a big time player for us. By the way, this $2 million right here, that's actually a JaVale McGee contract. Uh, I believe JaVale McGee's making like this much money for like the next like four seasons still because of a stretch provision that the Mavericks have him on from whenever they like released him from a contract. So just know that that money's there. Um, we want to, I, I'd personally like to get under the luxury tax that we can offer him that mid-level exception. So um, I've seen a lot of people talking about moving Tim Hardaway Jr. to do that. I want to actually do that later because I see Tim Hardaway Jr.'s contract is more valuable in a different potential trade, and we might actually be taking back more money in it. Uh, so it's something I kind of want to explore if we can't just get under the first apron first, because here's the thing with Dwight Powell. If we move Dwight Powell completely, we're back under the luxury tax by $2 million. So then we can offer Derek Jones our contract. So here's what needs to happen. We need to move Dwight Powell first. And so here's what I'm thinking. I've gone over to uh, Bleacher, not Bleacher Report, a basketball reference, and I'm like, okay, who's a comparable contract for um, uh, Dwight Powell? And I saw a couple guys here. I'm like, okay, Seth Curry, exactly. And then Troy Brown Jr., who's on a team option. So how can we just take back Troy Brown Jr.? Well, Detroit probably doesn't really want Troy Brown, right? Like that's not really somebody they're all that interested in. So can we pay Detroit to take a reserve center? Probably because they could probably use a reserve center to some capacity with this money. Can we just pay them kind of to take this player? Well, I think that we could. So that brings me back here to Fanspo. Those of you guys uh, that have been watching, you guys know what Fanspo is at this point. It's a really cool place with a lot of tools that help us keep this series as realistic as possible. So let's include Dallas here. They have us as a second apron team because of cap holds and everything right now. That's not going to be a concern because ideally we're doing like a one for one perfect trade, which the second apron allows. So here's what this would look like. Dwight Powell would, would be going over to the Pistons. Uh, honestly, the Pistons could even just like, like, cut him if they really wanted to but I don't think that's absolutely necessary we want to take back Troy Brown Jr. in this case with the idea of we would just release him right away by that logic and here's what we can do this 60th pick uh, you look at some of the things that they have they have the 54th and the 60th pick what we can do is we can give them this pick here so now they have two picks at the end of the draft that probably aren't all that valuable but for teams that don't really need to take on any more salary and they'd rather have draft and stash players this is a way for them to move up in that space to do so I think a team like the Indiana Pacers who kind of has two picks in the second round that's a team they could call to be like hey give us one of those you move back take these you don't really need that many more players on your roster anyway go make that happen right so we give them an asset basically just for taking on this money that uh, they don't have to take on but they can it's not a big deal for them to take that on because they're going to be getting rid of guys like uh, Fournier anyway and they're going to be quite a bit under the cap and able to operate and then obviously in return we're taking back Troy Brown and we can just cut him completely and it's not a big deal at all so just to show this this is what the trade would look like here very very simple Dwight Powell is on the move we lose our 60th pick in this one not a big deal we're taking back Troy Brown and just cutting him from the roster so that means no more 60th draft pick not a huge deal I'm sure you guys really don't care all that much anyway about the last pick in the draft you know you never know at the end of the day but I don't think it's all that important Dwight Powell is off the roster now we move these guys up here and now we are under the luxury tax space so here's here's where we're at now ideally in the offseason now we're going to the draft we don't have a pick not a big deal we don't bring anybody else in because we're trying to stay right here for the luxury tax so no draft in this one sorry y'all it's a little bit boring in that sense but what we can do now is we imagine that free agency is hitting we we are already talking to Derek Jones because because of the new uh, collective bargaining agreement a team can be talking to their own players right now we tell Derek Jones jr. this is the plan we want to give him that mid-level extension this is actually the article I was reading about all of it to confirm like the exact numbers and everything so I think it's a pretty cool thing but this is the non-tax mid-level level exception hard cap first apron and everything so this is the contract that we would be giving him uh so the 2024 2025 season he would be making this much money let's go plug Derek Jones Jr. in and say that he's on the team right now 
12, 8, 5, 9, 0, 0, 0. There we go for four seasons right here. Okay, so now we find ourselves within the first tax apron, but Derek Jones Jr. is back on the team. Let's throw him here. Okay, good. I do have a picture of him. That's awesome. Josh Green, throw him here or whatever, and then um, Exum will throw there. That's just how the rotation's working so far, right? Okay, that move is good. So where does this leave us now, right? Now we've basically got the boys back in town, right? We were able to bring everybody back. That's important. This team made the finals this last year, right? But we're looking to make improvements at the end of the day, right? We want to make improvements. And we're a little bit limited because we're in the first apron. The NBA draft has already happened, right? Uh, I'm just doing this for, like, storytelling purposes a little bit here. But, uh, ooh, Klingon went two in this one. And Saar went to the Spurs. How interesting. That's the randomness of these drafts a little bit. But it's neither uh, here nor there. We still want to move off some of these contracts and try to improve our team somehow the first one being tim hardaway jr right uh tim hardaway jr just doesn't need to be on this team anymore he doesn't really fit again not really his fault but i can think of somebody that i do think fits us kind of well and I, that's what i want to explore a little bit in uh the continuation of this trade right here um we keep uh this trade open because uh fanswell just doesn't remember the details otherwise very well so what I want to do is I want to add the Atlanta Hawks into the conversation, who ideally in this world probably just took a Zachary Reese or something like that, right? They are in an interesting situation where they're probably trying to trade for a star in some capacity. Maybe it's Brandon Ingram. Maybe they're moving to Jonte Murray, things like that. But one thing that they're in right now is cap hell, right? They're in this situation with all these long-term contracts where, at least in the video that I did with them, I was like, hey, let's restructure the team. Let's get you another star on this team with Trey Young. See how those two work together and then kind of go from there. But one of the other things that we did in that video is we set them up so that uh, even if it doesn't work out, Trey and in that case, it was Brandon Ingram. We wanted to make sure that they had cap flexibility a little bit earlier going forward so that if Trey Young and Brandon Ingram like do work together or they don't, they're not as restricted and they can make moves next season once they know the answer to their questions. And so that's what I want to try to do for them here with DeAndre Hunter, a guy that ideally they have Risache on the team at this point. And what we're doing is we would be taking DeAndre Hunter back. We would be moving Tim Hardaway Jr. over to the Hawks. Now, this trade doesn't completely work because of the apron rule right now um, so we need to include like a little bit more money to actually make make this work and we also have to just make it worth their while right DeAndre Hunter is probably a better player than Tim Hardaway Jr. at this point so what I want to do is I want to include uh, Maxence Prosper over here a first round pick from uh, last season that's not where I wanted to send him I wanted to trade him to the Hawks they get a young player that they can continue to develop right that's that right there we're saving them from the cap space they're getting a player that can play right away and tim hardaway jr should play well with trey young ideally he's not going to be like a good defender or anything like that that's just he's not a bad defender he's just not a great defender but ideally he fits a lot better in the hawk system and what they're trying to run he's at least going to be a better player than he was in dallas which wasn't bad but it wasn't as effective so all said and done we're taking back deandre hunter who's the better player in this case but we're taking on more money and everything we're saving them from a pretty scary cap situation that we already know doesn't work they're looking to clear some space for a resache in this point he's going to be a starter for them to some capacity maybe they've gone and gotten a brandon ingram or something already as well hard to say right but let's let's explore that possibility either way deandre hunter is no longer really necessary on this team they get back a young player to develop they get cap relief after a year so that uh this year because they're probably not going to win a finals next year let's be honest right but they're in a position to experiment this next year figure out what works and then have the ability to move other pieces going forward I think that this deal makes some sense to them in that way. And hopefully Tim Hardaway Jr. is just not like a sorry ass player for them at the same time, which he really shouldn't be. He's been a consistent scorer his whole career. So I think in reality, this trade works just fine. I know, by the way, it says that we're a second apron team in this one. We really wouldn't be. I can't figure out how to adjust it. Just like we've got um, our numbers here that tell us that we haven't quite hit it yet. And that's just because of the cap holds and everything that they have on here. We would, we would relinquish those cap holds at this point in the season. So in reality, this trade here goes through, and I think it makes a lot of sense. So what happened here? Tim Hardaway Jr. became DeAndre Hunter, and Maxence Prosper is now out. It's unfortunate. I know we don't have time to necessarily develop guys right now anyway, which sucks. You know, you never like to say that, but that's somewhat of the case right now. And so DeAndre Hunter being the player that he is, which is a very high-level scorer. And ooh, actually, I want to show you guys something. So here's a little stat muse for you guys. Uh, DeAndre Hunter, 38.5% three-point shooter. That's awesome. 3 and D dude. We all know what he does. Makes a lot of sense for a Dallas offense 
sense. But look at this, like in particular, like these uh, these corner shots, which we know are so valuable, are so good for him. He falls a little bit short here on the wing, but otherwise like really high volume shooter in these spots where he doesn't excel as much as when he has to create his own shot. He's pretty good around the rim, which is good, but his creation isn't as good. So ideally you're putting him in a system where guys like Luka and Kyrie are creating everything for him. Now you've got a pretty cool thing going on and you get a pretty effective player. He's still getting a 16 point a game score roughly that can play good defense. He's long and athletic. He can kind of switch with guys like Washington and stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to move uh, these guys down a bit just for a second. And we're going to throw Derek Jones in here. Um, we could probably even throw Derek Jones in like this spot or something and have Maxi Kleba be there for a second. But anyway, um, so we've taken on a bit more money. Not the biggest deal in the world but we're getting better right okay now what other moves can we make we've made a cup we made a small trade we made a relatively decent sized trade i got one more guy that i'm really trying to bring in oh and tim hardaway jr is not on this team anymore i know this is a lot of trades but i think there can be some logic to this as well let's help out my favorite team the chicago bulls with something who absolutely need to start selling their assets i don't think there's anybody in the nba that disagrees that the bulls need to sell their assets it's ridiculous what they're doing right now one of those people, Alex Caruso, right? We're not a second apron team yet, so that's good. Uh, we could mess around with as many like trade things as we really want to, but what I want to do for them is buy Alex Caruso on them. We, we are off of them. We all know Alex Caruso, nice shooter, elite defender, doesn't need the basketball to be successful, does all the little things you need to win, which honestly, that's something that this team could use, right? It's just one of those dudes that's just going to go out there and be that hustle and grit and toughness dude, right? Totally understand. He's going to be a great presence on the team. I would love that. Here's what I'm thinking. Maxi Kleba, someone that's no longer it needed for us. We sent him over to the Bulls. Alex Caruso would come back here to the Mavericks. Why would they do that, right? Well, we now have something over here called a 2025 first round pick who the Bulls are going to want to be a part of in this next uh, season. They've got a Portland protected pick that they're probably not going to get, and they don't have their own first round pick, and they're going to want to get in on it some way or another. We're sending this pick. Um, I think it's going to have to be unprotected to get Caruso. We're going to send this over to the Bulls in this case. We try out this trade. They finally get the first round pick they've wanted for Caruso. I know there were points where they're like, we want Jonathan Kaminga for him or whatever. We're going to assume that they've come to their senses at this point. If you guys want to argue with me in the in the comments that they won't do that, I completely understand. Honestly, I completely understand what you're talking about. They might not come to their senses, but in all reality, this is a pretty solid offer for them. They get an unprotected first round pick. They have to take on Maxi Kleba. Andre Drummond's leaving them anyway, and they don't have any other bigs on the team. Totally fine for them to do that. I'm happy to make this trade and just push it through. So now Maxi Kleba becomes Alex Caruso. Very, very cool. Maxi Kleba is off the team. That actually saved us a little bit of money as well. We're going to move AJ Lawson down here and move Alex Caruso to here. What have we done so far? We have added defense and we have added length. Uh, I don't need this Derek Jones uh, thing here anymore. We're going to move these guys back up. We have a lot of defenders on this team, which is good because we have two of the most unguardable players in the NBA on this team already. We have another scorer in Hardy. Should we need him? PJ Washington's going to be solid for us. DeAndre Hunter is. We've got the dynamic duo at center right now. Basically just the equivalent of 282 overalls in 2K. Love it. You still got guys like Exum, Green and stuff, uh, Caruso. There's a ton going on with this team right now. This is already a much improved Dallas Mavericks team, but we still have free agency and we have minimum contracts that we can give out to fill out kind of the rest of this roster with some other pieces. And because we're a contender, not many names that we can't get in terms of the minimum contract market. Let's go explore who that is. These are the rest of our free agents. Not really all that interested in bringing any of these guys back as much as I like having Markeith Morris on a team just to be like an enforcer, if nothing else. Um, let's take a look at the point guard position first. Is there anybody that would make some sense for us to bring in as like a veteran point guard or something like, I'm not going to lie, like a Patrick Beverly would make a ton of sense to me. Him and Caruso were on the same team at one point. We know they like each other a bunch. Bring him in. He can still contribute a little bit. Just be a good team leader. Uh, the odds of him really needing to be a dominant ball handler is probably not that high because we've got guys like Exum, Caruso, and Hardy that can do it if needed as well. I think I'd just rather have the veteran presence on my team and say that we're bringing in Patrick Beverly for this one, man. Let's let's get Patrick Bev a championship run. So Patrick Beverly goes here. We've got this much money for one season. Pat Bev slides in right there. Now, I want it to be known. 
we're going to hit the second apron, unfortunately. There's not a ton we can do about it. We did take on a little bit more money with Hunter. We took a little bit less with Caruso. It's just between like uh, these contracts, it was going to be really hard to make this team better and not hit the second apron, which does restrict us a little bit. It does prevent, prevent us from being in like the buyout market and things like that. But look, we're trying to win a championship at the end of the day. If we need to, hopefully some of these contracts are easier to move like a Josh Green or something like that is maybe someone we could move if needed. A Dante Exum might be all we really need uh, to cut at the end of the day because actually Dante Exum is a contract that we could cut if we needed to last second. Same with like AJ Lawson if we needed to make a trade go through or something because their contracts aren't like completely guaranteed. And I want to say they're both like New Year's guarantees or something like that. But anyway, just wanted to point that out. Let's try and add another forward to this team. Who would be another good forward for us to add to this team? There's a couple people I have in mind. I need guys that can work well without the basketball, play switch defense, things like that if we absolutely need them to. And I've got I've got some people in mind. The name I really like here is Tory Craig, a guy that was on the Bulls or whatever during uh, this last season. He's a guy that, uh, good three-point shooter, good defender, been around the league a little bit at this point tough can switch do things like that i think bringing tory craig out here on a minimum contract would make a lot of sense so i want to go get tory craig tory craig would be making this much money for one season we can throw him in here as another power forward option feel good about that let's go get one more reserve uh center now because we need a guy behind them and i normally i'd say we want diversity in our types of centers i don't know if we're going to be able to exactly do that and I, I don't think it's absolutely necessary either um i think luke and Kyrie work well with these run jump and dunk type centers so if there is a name out there that makes sense for us to get on a minimum it's not deandre jordan really anymore i don't really think that that makes a ton of sense Jackson Hayes, on the other hand, is kind of interesting. So Jackson Hayes would make this much money if he signed with us, which is like the exact same amount that he would be getting with uh, the Lakers, as you guys can see here. So he does have a player option for more. But is it worth it to him to come to us where we know that he's going to or we know we're going to play him a little bit better? That could be enough right there, honestly, for him and maybe a shot at like contending or something like that. We tell him like, hey, God forbid something happens to one of these guys. You get to slide in and be the next version of them because you're the exact same type of player as these guys. You just haven't found as much success. We know how to make it work with these guys. Opt out of this, come be with us. I think that that makes some sense. I want to go get Jackson Hayes and add him to the team then. Jackson Hayes opts out of his current deal, comes signs with us. One year deal. We throw Jackson Hayes onto here. And would you look at that? The 2020, 20, ah, the 2024, 2025 Dallas Mavericks. What do we think of this? Let's do a quick recap again. Uh, we added a bunch of defense, right? And some more leaders, Patrick Beverly, uh, Alex Caruso, DeAndre Hunter, just a nice added starter at the end of the day. Brought back Derek Jones Jr. Added guys like Torrey Craig. We have a reserve center in Jackson Hayes now that should be able to contribute for us. We did all of this stuff. We brought back like the team that matters right now. And we made some improvements, added some switchability, hopefully some more defense. We've got more perspective for Luka going into the next season, which is good. He just came off a finals run. This team looks pretty good. I feel really, really good about this team. I think we made some smart moves. I think we did it in a very precise manner, which is very important. And we were able to keep all, a lot of our pieces locked up here. I mean, you look at this, we'll have to deal with Caruso after here, but we should have the bird rights of him at that point, which is pretty good. We'll have to deal with Hardy after the season, but we should be able to deal with that as well. So we're not going to like lose out on anybody in this process, which is a really, really good thing. I think this team can ideally go back and fight the Celtics again and put up more of a challenge, right? Are they going to be able to beat the Celtics? Hard to say. Probably not still in all honesty. I don't mean to like put a damper on things, but like here's the thing. When you have two of the most unguardable players in basketball, a lot of things can happen. So just getting back there, being better than we were before. I think that's a big, big thing. But yeah, you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. And remember my new rule with comments. Try to think through this stuff a little bit. Otherwise, I will timestamp you and just not respond to you because I want to respond to people that actually put in the time. Or if you want to just say something nice, I'll just say, oh, thank you very much. That's very nice. But I want my channel to be an environment for people to actually have a good conversation. We don't need to be like the rest of the Internet that's just yelling at each other, or yelling into the ether like this. This is not the place for that. Like, I, I just I want this to be a good place for people to talk about things and not as long as I can moderate that, I will, and I won't reward bad behavior. So that's the, that's the coach in me at the end of the day. That's considerate me telling you guys to like go run some laps or something like that. But anyway, appreciate you guys as always, and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.